Hello and welcome back. So what I want to talk to you about today is transformers and how you can model this sort of component in a circuit simulator. Now on the surface, a transformer is a really simple component. You got a bunch of wire and maybe a magnetic core and that's about it. But once you get a look into the finer details, the component becomes really complicated really fast. So if you're curious about how you can model a transformer using LT Spice, then keep watching. So to start things off, the difference between two separate inductors and a transformer is what happens with the magnetic field of the inductors. With separate inductors, the magnetic fields are completely isolated, but with the transformer, part of the magnetic field is shared. And from that point of view, you have things like power transformers, where large part of the magnetic field is shared between the two inductors, especially being gated by the magnetic core. And with this sort of device, you have a coupling factor of above 98% usually, so to keep power transfer efficient, but you also have transformers that have a weak coupling. So one example would be this sort of arrangement. So this is a transformer for Tesla coil. You have the two inductors and most of the magnetic field is not shared. So most of the field from the large inductor is somewhere outside. Most of the magnetic field of the small inductor is somewhere else again. But under special conditions, the two inductors are very well coupled and this happens during resonant coupling. And this sort of principle is also being used with things like filter transformers, so intermediate frequency transformers, for example. So we can now turn to the circuit simulator and define a transformer as a number of inductors that have a certain coupling in between them. And we can do that by placing at least two inductors in the circuit and adding a K statement. So this is a SPICE directive where you start off with K and a number. So if you have multiple transformers in the circuit, you need K1, K2, K3, and so on. Then all of the inductors involved and the coupling factor. Now, it's important to mention that there's no point in front of the K. So it's K simple without a point. Now, this coupling factor can have values between one and minus one. And what the negative value means is that the second inductor is inversely coupled. So you can either rotate it in the schematic or you put a negative value to it. If we run the circuit, we can see that we have a certain signal applied. In the first case, we have the exact same signal on the other side, so the two signals are in phase. Whereas with the second transformer, the secondary side is 180 degrees out of phase. Now, another way we can achieve this phase inversion is with transformers that look something like this. So we have transformers with an intermediate pin. So for example, in a push-pull transformer or a differential power supply transformer. And we can either draw it this way or the other way. Both of these are equivalent, of course, but with the transformer on the right side, it's more obvious that one of the inductors is inversely connected compared to the other inductor. So the point basically means where the inductor is starting and it's useful to show its orientation compared to other inductors in the same transformer. So with these arrangements, if we look at the waveforms, we can see that one of the signals is 180 degrees out of phase with the other signal. Now, speaking of coupling inductors, you can couple as many inductors as you want in LT Spice. So in this case, we had three inductors, but you can model a transformer as complicated as you want. But one more thing that you can do is couple inductors in different ways in between them. So what I'm trying to say is you can also run with this sort of arrangement. So here I defined one case statement where inductor one is coupled with inductor two with a coupling factor of 99.9%, .9%, but these two inductors are also coupled with inductor three with a very weak coupling of only 10%. So 
So the circuit simulator doesn't have any problem if you define multiple coupling factors for the same inductor. You can have a certain coupling between two inductors and then a completely different coupling between one of these inductors or both of them and a third or how many other inductors you want. So if we run this circuit, we can see that we have the exact same signal on inductor one and inductor two, so because of the strong coupling. But if we now look at inductor three, we can see that a very weak signal gets transferred to this one because of the very small coupling. Now there's one more thing I want to mention about LT spice regarding transformers, and that is that you should never leave parts of the circuit completely floating. So even though you would use a transformer to isolate circuits, if you completely isolate them in LT spice, so you create an arrangement that looks something like this, where the right side is connected to ground but the left side is completely floating, in certain cases you can run into problems. And that is because LD spice will calculate all of its voltage values in reference to its ground. And if the circuit is not connected to the ground, then you can run into all sorts of problems. So if you really want to have an isolated circuit, my recommendation would be just to connect it to ground at least through a very large resistor, so 10, 100, 1000 mega ohms, but never leave it floating like this. Now, apart from the coupling factor, there's a bunch of other parameters involved in characterizing a transformer. So first of all, let's look at how we could determine these parameters if we already have the transformer. And then let's see how we can implement them in the circuit simulator. Now, since the transformer is basically made from inductors, the first thing to characterize is the parameters of the inductors. So for that you can measure the primary and secondary side inductance using an inductance meter, and you can also measure the primary and secondary side resistance using an ohm meter. Now regarding the other parameters, for example the coupling factor, we can use also an inductance meter. So what I got here is an inductance meter measuring one side of the transformer, it's measuring 3.1011 on Re, and this is the inductance when the secondary side is open, so there's nothing connected to the secondary side. Now we can get a different inductance value if I short circuit the secondary side. So if I do this, the inductance that I measure drops to 290 to 300 millihenry. And based on the two values, we can work out exactly what the coupling factor is between the primary and secondary side. So based on these equations, we can tell that this transformer has a coupling factor of about 95-96%. Not great, not terrible. Now we can also perform a similar experiment for my other inductor, so for my Tesla coil transformer, and here I'm measuring the large coil, it has 1.642 millihenry, and now if I take my small inductor and short circuit it, we can see that the first inductor's inductance changes, but by a very small amount. So we barely dropped about 10 microhenry. So again, if we go through the numbers, we can see that for this particular transformer, the coupling factor is only about 7.8%. So this is a clear example of a weak coupling. Now there's one more parameter that can come in really useful when you're analyzing common mode noise and switching circuitry, and that is the interwinding capacitance. So for this you need capacitance meter, and you simply need to measure the capacitance between primary and secondary side. So here I just connected one side of my capacitance meter to the primary inductor and the other terminal to the secondary in inductor. Now, of course, to perform a properly accurate measurement, you'll need to short circuit both of the inductors and measure like that. But just to get an idea of the sort of values you can get, this will suffice. So now let's take these parameters and build up a more complex model of our transformer. So, based on the data that we collected, we can create this sort of model. So we have our primary inductance and resistance, both of these are put directly into 
the inductor. And other than these two parameters, you could add your parallel resistance and parallel capacitance if you have this information, but these are usually quite difficult to obtain. Then I took my winding to winding isolation capacitance and split it up into two equal pieces. And then on the secondary side, again, I added the inductance and the resistance. And finally, the coupling factor is inserted into the coupling statement that interconnects the two windings. Now, another way in which we could use this information is in a model that looks something like this. So what makes this different is that the inductors are ideal inductors in this case, they only have inductance, nothing else. And also the coupling statement has a coupling factor of one, so it's ideal. So the extra inductance that is not really coupling is added as a separate leakage inductance in series with the first inductor. And then we also have here the series resistance outside. So the two models are equivalent. The only difference between them would be this isolation capacitor, since once it's connected directly between input and the output, and in the second case it's connected over the coupled inductor, but that has little impact, and you will find both of these variants being applied. But regardless, both of these models function in the exact same way. The only difference being that the second one is a bit more complicated and it will just fill up your schematic with all sorts of extra components. But if we simulate this, we can see that both the upper and the lower one is giving us the exact same voltage. So now let's look at how we could obtain these parameters from a datasheet. Because if you don't have the transformer yet, how are you going to simulate it? So what I got here is the datasheet for a switching converter transformer. I mean, there's multiple transformers. And here we have a four inductor transformer, so it has one primary and three secondaries. We have the DC resistances for all four of the inductors. We have the primary inductance, and rather than giving us a coupling factor, they're giving us our leakage inductance. So from these two inductances, we can work out what the coupling factor is. And they also give us the turns ratio. So primary is considered one, and then the other inductors are a different value. And since we know the turns ratio and primary inductance, we can also work out what the inductances are in the secondary inductors. And most data sheets will only contain this information. You might get some sort of saturation information, so what is your maximum current that you should be using, but that's about it. Now, a different kind of data sheet, this is for an isolation transformer, so this is something used in digital signal transmission. Here we also have our open circuit inductance, we have our DC resistance, our leakage inductance, but we also have this winding to winding capacitance. So this is the capacity that I measured on my transformer between primary and secondary. And here, since this is a high frequency isolation transformer where you want to isolate things, having this extra capacitance can have quite big consequences. So it's important to have it mentioned in the datasheet. So all in all, you do have more complex models of transformers than this. You can also model things like saturation and core losses and all sorts of other things, but for most purposes, these parameters and these specifications will be enough to create a realistic simulation. So all in all, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be updated with all my latest videos and see you next time. Bye bye.